mother's exact quote? Yeah. <laughs> the producers called her one night and said, how would you feel if your daughter, if we told you your daughter's going to star in a $3 million Broadway musical? Every actor and actress in the country dreams of starring here on Broadway. out to tell the story of one actress whose dreams came true and the story has a classic Broadway ending it's just not the one you might expect Jerilyn Petchell was a 27-year-old unknown until she was cast in the lead of a Broadway musical celebrating the life of America's favorite sex goddess, Marilyn Monroe. Being cast as Marilyn, Broadway play, the whole thing, has it been a dream come true for you? Definitely. I've always, I've always wanted to be on a Broadway stage. My first time to New York was uh, back in, gosh, I don't remember the year, but I was 17 years old. 10 years ago, 17 years old, and was on a high school trip with my classmates, saw eight Broadway shows in five days, and told them, someday I'm going to be on that stage, and then I went, sure you will. So for those of you listening, here I am. <laughs> so it really can happen. Yes. There's a lot of work involved in becoming a star. The show has over 20 songs, half of which were Gerilyn's. A single dream of my own. It was an inner peace that I felt all along that gave me the courage. I knew I was going to be playing Marilyn. I just knew inside that I could do it. Everyone from the director, Kenny Ortega, on down believed in her. Why is Gerilyn right to play Marilyn? Oh. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of reasons for, um, for my choice uh, in Gerilyn. We, we saw a thousand ladies in New York alone. Uh, and a lot of women that even resembled Marilyn. Okay. Jerry has a voice that is a very articulate, sweet, special voice quality in her singing that won me over. Are you taking a chance bringing in a, a relative unknown to Broadway? I think we're taking a chance, period. And uh, we believe in Jerry tremendously. Marilyn's going to be the talk of the town? I hope so. And Gerilyn? I know so. <laughs> Hold it. Head back. Just I don't know what it's going to be like to feel that overnight overwhelming success that people are talking about. Perfect. Shake it all out. Let's talk about the what ifs. Assume the show gets bad reviews and you're closed down. Ah, beautiful. What happens to you? I never think that way. I, I couldn't begin to answer that because I never think that way. I. I think the reason that I'm here is I'm a very positive person. I just know I'm going to be doing this show for a long time. That's the way I feel. But that was not the way it happened. Shortly after we did this interview, Gerilyn was fired. When they first told me, I, I had um, a very numb face to the point where a producer looked at me and said uh, he wondered what was going on inside me because my eyes just didn't read anything. And I just, I was just numb. It, it, it was like somebody hitting you in the stomach, and yet I didn't feel it. I usually call myself a singer who moves well. I'm not a professional dancer. I dance, but I'm not a professional dancer. And I guess at this point, after looking at the show, they wanted to move into more of a, for entertainment purposes, more into a, a dance format focus. It doesn't make sense. One day, Gerilyn was just right. The next, she was all wrong. But then again, it doesn't really make sense to risk millions of dollars, which is exactly what many shows do here on Broadway. Well, for Gerilyn, it was a dream come true. To a group of others, it was an investment, one that simply had to pay off. 
And no one is more aware of that than producer Billy May, who has to answer to those investors. It's one of the most toughest things a producer can do. There's a word, they call themselves a producer. The producer really means deliver the goods or be very quiet. Okay, dancers, let's take it from, uh... It would have been very easy to say to Kenny Ortega, oh, I know you dance, and I know you never saw Marilyn dance, and you thought she was just going to be the actress-singer, but every time you go to move, there's an opportunity for the ladies to dance. Geraldine was not a dancer, never pretended to be one. Did it strike you as being odd that they waited until this late in the game to say, ah, oh, Geraldine, you're just not right? Um, that's the way it comes off to me, and maybe for people that are watching, it would seem very strange a week before the previews were tentatively scheduled that this should happen. Stalling in this business is money. Nobody can really understand unless they go so through something that devastating. We met and we discussed it, and it was done in hours. I can't sit around and dwell on that. I can't feel sorry for myself. I think I've just caused to feel a lot of pain. But um, I have to see where my life is le leading right now and go on from there. And, as they say, the show must go on. There is a new Marilyn named Allison Reed. She isn't quite a household name, but she has appeared on Broadway before. She's more familiar with the disappointments than Geraldine was. Two of Allison's shows closed the same night they opened. What I do, without being pessimistic at all, is I say, I have four weeks of rehearsal, and then opening night, we'll see, <laughs> you know? So if it goes on from there, it's icing. The business is unpredictable. You never know what will happen. That is both its strength and its weakness. This time around, Gerilyn struck out. Maybe next time, things will be different. I was an unknown who came to Broadway to, to have this wonderful opportunity, but I think the next time I would um, have a little more foresight as to how I'd handle it, handle the situation. But I'd do it over again and tomorrow. The program credits Marilyn to no less than 10 writers and composers, and I have the feeling that all of them together could not write a note to the milkman. For this show is so thin, it makes People Magazine look like a PhD thesis. The show actually has no book. Marilyn's biography is sketched very faintly through some two dozen weak songs. And when there is dialogue, it is laughable. When Joe DiMaggio asks Marilyn for a date, she says, I'll have to check my calendar. Social, that is. To her third husband, Marilyn delivers solemnly this gem, quote, but you're Arthur Miller. How can you be so boring? It's sort of the moose murders of musicals. All three husbands and the other characters are merely stick figures, and so is Marilyn. During her progression from lonely little girl to troubled star, she mostly stands around. She wears lovely gowns and accurate wigs, but she is all dressed up with no place to go. There is no conflict, no tension, as Marilyn stands rooted and the alleged action swirls around her. The swirling includes a lot of bubbles as Marilyn, in a bathtub number, is serenaded by 10 chorus boy plumbers in pink satin overalls carrying clear plastic plungers. Help. In the title role, Allison Reed captures the Monroe Manor and appears to be a solid musical performer. And it's a shame she doesn't have more to do. A young singer, Willie Falk, also stands out sucking one number. But with tons of scenery, 16 producers, and heaven only knows how many directors, Marilyn is an emotional vacuum. At one point during an acting lesson, somebody shouts, Marilyn, pretend to be on a ship that is sinking. In this show, Marilyn and the other actors do not have to pretend. This is Stuart Klein. Pia, was it a bomb or the birth <laughs> of a bombshell? Well, this one's a little like Annie, it's a little like Grease, it's a little like 42nd Street and about a dozen other shows. The only thing that Marilyn is not like is the life of Marilyn Monroe. She was the dream girl who lived in a nightmare of alcohol, drugs, depression, tantrums, promiscuity, the horror and pain of which was brought to an end by her suicide at 34. This material has been turned into a musical comedy with a happy ending. This 
is a travesty. I knew we were in trouble when three fairy godparents sprinkled stardust on little Norma Jean, robustly played by cute Christy Coombs. This fairy chorus in rainbow colors tipped us off we were in La La Land. Alice Reed made a striking Marilyn physically, and she can sing, dance, and look smashing in blazing gowns. But the show is overproduced, the sets ponderous, the lyrics simplistic, the dialogue trite, the plot superficial, the direction pedestrian. And even if this play were called Wanda, it would be grotesque. As Marilyn, it is dishonest. I did find Mary Testa and Melissa Bailey jolly and diverting as those queens of gossip, Heather and Luella. I mean, poor Joe DiMaggio and Arthur Miller were portrayed on stage. DiMaggio had to sing this cornball song, and Arthur Miller was typing away while lively dancers whirled around. We were spared, thank goodness, seeing Arthur Miller do a tap dance, though we were treated to an upbeat rendition of alcohol abuse and pill popping. The play accuses Hollywood of distorting the real Marilyn. This is worse. It's a lie. The play I noticed in the program is called A Fable. A fable is a story with a moral. The only moral I could find is that neither the living nor the dead are protected from the crass tastelessness of showbiz, Hollywood style or Broadway style. Now and again, I wonder if Broadway is indeed dying. Certainly, I hear a lot about that and read quite a bit about it. Let's just say the possibility of the death of Broadway is a frequent, vague presence in the back of my mind, or at least it was until tonight. It came right up front tonight, because tonight I think I attended The Wake. Marilyn is runaway rank amateurism an amusing, amus bleh, bleh, a musical, well it isn't a musical, that's why I couldn't say it, a musical of appalling stupidity. Mm -hmm. All night long it breathes heavily with the social significance of Marilyn Monroe, though actually it's a pointless exercise that has nothing worthwhile to say about anything. <laughs> Songs are flung this way and that, all sorts of songs, except for good ones, with dismal lyrics to match. 75% of the songs, incidentally, have very little to do with Marilyn. Joe DiMaggio gets songs, fans get songs, factory workers and gossip columnists get songs. Marilyn gets short shrift. And not just in the song department. The dialogue is dismal drivel, along the lines of, baby, you've got it all. Why would you want to throw it away? The show has glitz, flash, sequins, and other such Las Vegas effects to no point. No matter what you know or care about Marilyn going into this thing, by evening's end, you'll know and care less. I want to protect you, help you, love you, but you've got to give me the chance, the time. I can't share you with all this Hollywood crap. Hollywood, please. These days, Broadway could certainly give Hollywood a run for its money in that department. Take Marilyn, please. It is a vile thing. Uh, vile. That totally. was supposed to be Joe DiMaggio. That was supposed to be Joe DiMaggio, who, who probably w wants to kill somebody tonight. <laughs> the show Marilyn had a lot of problems. They even changed the lead once. Joel Siegel was in the opening night audience, and he's here now to tell us whether this is a winner or not. The Broadway pros all tell the story. The show is dying in previews. There's a big meeting. What's wrong? The score, the book, the acting. Finally, they agree. You know what's wrong with the show? The shoes. Marilyn is a textbook example of that story come to life. A book writer, a director, five songwriters, 13 producers. Can't agree on a point of view. Can't tell one coherent story. But they got great shoes and costumes and sets, money. The Defense Department doesn't spend money like this. This scene is unfortunately typical. Marilyn meets her first husband. He's in the car. Yes, a real automobile on stage. They meet Mary, and he disappears. Did they get divorced? Did he die? Did he see this musical version of Marilyn's life and slip out the back door of the Minskoff while no one was watching? We never know. The talented cast does work hard, but with no character to become, Allison Reed's Marilyn can't be anything more than an imitation of the movie star. With no story and no drama, this Marilyn isn't anything more than an imitation of a Broadway musical. But an expensive imitation. Finally, in the second act, one number did get to me. Ten guys wearing silver and pink overalls, carrying pink plastic monkey wrenches and plungers with long glucite handles, supposed to be plumbers, do a tap dance around a Marilyn suspended in a star-shaped bubble bath, closest thing I've seen on Broadway to springtime for Hitler. Oh, yeah, they were wearing pink patent leather work boots. Great shoes. Judith Christ is here to tell us if they're happy memories. Well, Tom, 
Marilyn is probably the most pointless, exploitative musical to hit Broadway in many a season. A muddle of sentimentality, misinformation, and tacky production, all set to totally unmemorable music and dull dancing. Too many cooks, some 16 producers, 10 songwriters, a series of directors and performers before the show opened, have made a thin broth that gives us a less than factual story of Norma Jean Baker's rise to stardom as Marilyn Monroe, her first two marriages, her defection to New York's cultural life, her third marriage, and her return to Hollywood. Alison Reed, as Monroe, captures her in mannerisms and looks, if not in song. Reed, a first-rate belter, is the only attraction on stage at the Minskoff. There are cartoons of Hedda Hopper and Luella Parsons on hand. Monroe's second husband, Joe DiMaggio, is made to look stupid. And her third, Arthur Miller, is portrayed and described as a bore. Worst of all, in the sappy finale, we're given an upbeat ending, indicating Marilyn fulfilled all her dreams and lived happily ever after. Marilyn, an American fable. Only in America, and only on Broadway, can such nonsense keep going. Sarah? Do you expect that play to remain open much longer? Not much longer, but it's still going. All right. well, it's, uh, it's 10 to 1 right now. <laughs> the fabled musical Marilyn opened last night, and it may be another case of the opening night party lasting longer than the play. But noticeably absent was Joe DiMaggio, who was a major part of the musical. Imagine Joe DiMaggio singing. Off the record, Joe is furious about the way he was portrayed, but he always says he will never, ever discuss anything about his former wife, Marilyn Monroe, in public.